Just uh, speak up a little bit. Good morning and welcome to Sign Africa Live featuring Midcomp, HP and Zunt. This is our first live demonstration session. And owing to live streaming environment, we would like to just apologize for any errors up front. Please ask questions. There's a chat window provided on the right. Um, there's also some polls, so please do give us your input there whenever you have a chance. All questions will be answered in the live Q&A panel discussion towards the end of the webinar. Should an audience, sorry, should the audience have any connectivity issues, the session is recorded and it will be made live afterwards on signafrica.com on our live platform. We are now crossing live to Sean Davis at the Midcoms Innovation Hub and Disaster Recovery Center in Johannesburg. Thank you, Darlin. Uh, my name's Sean Davis, and I'm coming to you live from the Midcomp uh, Innovation Hub and Disaster Recovery Center here in Johannesburg. It's a privilege to be with you today. And we're going to be showcasing some COVID-19 centered products uh, for manufacture, utilizing products like the HP Latex uh, printers, the HP Stitch, as well as the Zunt cutting systems. Uh, but before we start and go into all this, I'd like to give you a little bit of an overview and uh, information about the Innovation Hub. This is a state-of-the-art facility that we have here in Janusburg with a fleet of the latest uh, cutting-edge printing and finishing equipment. Um, and I'm going to take you around and show you what we, what we have. So moving across to this side here, we have the uh, Gotex printer, which is a textile printer predominantly for printing onto cotton text textiles. Moving over here, we have a production unit and moving across to the 360, which is a medium to um, entry level type product. I'm going to come back across here and show you the other products that we have. So we have a JHF Vista V2800, which is a flatbed printer, fantastic for rigid type printing. In the background, we have the Cleverick heat press which goes and works in conjunction with our stitch machine, which is the die sublimation printer that we have. This is a 1.6 meter die sublimation printer, uh, followed over here by the Latex 335 print and cut, which is part of the focus for today. In the back corner there, we have a page wide printer, which is capable of producing over 1,079 square meters an hour for high volume poster print. And last but not least, our favorite machine here, the Zunt, which is your um, Swiss cutting digital cutter. Um, we also have, which you can't see uh, at this point in time, uh, a 3.2 meter wide printer, the L1500. And we also have the latest in technology from Hewlett Packard, which is the R series hybrid latex flatbed printer. So as I mentioned earlier, our facility that we have here is for disaster recovery. Um, machines unfortunately do go down. And to support our customers, they can have use of this facility. So we have a program that HP embarked on, uh, sorry, Midcomp embarked on earlier this, the, the, late last year, which is called the Midcomp PPU, which is a paper use program. Uh, with this program, it allows us to, uh, our customers to be able to print at a fixed square meter rate. Um, they never pay for inks, they never pay for print heads. They never pay for spare parts, labor, travel, nothing whilst the machine is under the PPU con contract. And as it happens, if you're part of that program, you get access to this whole facility here. Thing is you're facing a deadline, you don't know which way to turn, you don't know what to do. That's where the iHub comes into operation, is that you email us the file, we'll be able to continue your 
production for you here and you get billed as you would be paying on your normal PPU rate. It's a very simple process to actually do that. We're also an innovation hub. So the innovation hub allows us to do a lot of testing for clients, especially when they're wanting to prototype and try and test different materials, et cetera, et cetera. We're working with suppliers a lot doing that. And it's fantastic that we can actually be at that cutting edge when there's new materials and products that come into the uh, marketplace. Um, one of the things about mid, mid comp is that um, the company ethos is all about being a catalyst for growth. That is our uh, mission statement as a company. And part of that is setting up a training facility. And we've been privileged over the past year to have had a upskill program where we've taken unemployed people from the street and we've been able to upskill them to levels to become machine operators. And we've had 13 successful candidates doing that um, where they are now placed in uh, um, businesses around the country um, to actually become machine operators. So we're very proud to be part of that process. Um, so we're here to talk about COVID-19 type products and there's a wealth of opportunity that's been created uh, in the signage industry from COVID-19. Um, there's some people that have really excelled in this field and I'll come to that a little bit later. But we're basically here to talk about different types of products. So we have products for COVID-19 that are uh, PPE products uh, for your likes of shields, which we have over here, which is a face shield. Simple, easy, easy to cut out. You can print, add a logo to it as you would like. Um, hand sanitizer bottles, very simple. Printing your uh, labels and stickers that you want on your latex 335 print and cut. Um, we also have the ability to use products like ContraVision, which allows us to be able to um, offer different products into the marketplace. It's great for advertising because it allows you to view through whatever you're going to um, show up on. This comes in, let me just grab this one here, comes in different transparencies depending on the application that you want for doing your COVID-19 work. Um, we've created lots of things like face masks customers are making at this point in time. Face shields, as I said, there are sneeze. Uh, and been very successful. We also have uh, something that's been fairly unique and being created. I'm just going to take you over here to look at the uh, um, bed that we have. This is from Intermarket and this is cut out of Zanita board. So um, this is for hospitals, should the need arise that there are, isn't, isn't enough capacity in hospitals that they have to take a convention center and utilize hospital beds can be cut out of Zanita board. Very, very easy to recycle and uh, reuse. If you need any details on this, uh, please get in touch with Intermarket. Talk to Alistair. There is a cutting pattern available for anybody that wants to do this, utilizing the Zanita board for this application. Uh, Palram, who's also one of our suppliers, they supply various types of boards and uh, they also have a full range of different um, products that are available for making uh, hospital uh, rooms, uh, dividers, etc., etc. So there's lots and lots of different ap applications. Um, we're here today to talk about some products that have been utilized for uh, um, things that customers have been making and printing during this time. So we're going to be talking about the 335 print and cut, which is over here. We will also talk about the S500 dye sublimation printer. Uh, we'll touch on that. And of course, we'll go to the Zunt, which is our digital cutter and we'll be showing you some uh, features that the Zund Cutter has. But first I want to talk about um, the Latex 335. This is the most sold, best-selling HP Latex printer in the marketplace. It's a perfect balance between printer and cutter. Fantastic workflow for a low to medium t type business. Um, it's busy printing at the moment and I'm going to start the cutting. So it has a unique feature because this as a package allows us to print and cut at the same time, uh, which a lot of people can't do with traditional type printers. They can either be printing or they can be cutting, but they can't do both at the same time. You have the feature where you can actually print to this uh, machine. I'm just going to move out the way here. 
so we can focus on this. So the printing of this is printing one thing and it can be cutting a totally different pattern. Uh, the nice thing is it works roll to roll as well. Um, the roll to roll facility allows you to print unattended at night and then you could cut during the day. Um, gives you some real great flexibility with the um, machine. It requires minimal maintenance. The machine is a hands-off type machine. You may be required to once a month put a few drops of oil on the shaft to lubricate it, uh, but it's a very clean machine. You'll never get ink on your hands with this machine. If you do, you've done something wrong. Um, one of the uh, nice features of this machine is that you've got um, uh, the ability to change print heads by yourself. Um, so print heads on this machine allows you to do various things. This has got a little blue handle. So anything on the machine that has a blue handle is end user changeable. You can pull this out, replace the print head. Very, very simple and easy to actually do. Um, it's fully functional. It calibrates itself. It does its own alignment and everything. Very, very simple to utilize. Inks on this machine are water-based. Uses a 775 mil ink and extremely affordable. Uh, very, very reasonable to actually print. As I said, it's got its own self-calibrating system which will allow you to be able to do its alignments, its calibrations, all of that. Very, very simple. So if you wanted to go on leave at Christmas time or when you shut down, this is the kind of machine you can just turn off and come back four weeks later, one or two cleans, and it will get back to its normal self and it will work quite com com comfortably and easily. There are certain things built into the, this machine as far as... Um, features of cameras. So it has three cameras that are built into this machine. So the one camera is used for OMAS, which is for the uh, media uh, advance, so that it'll always stop banding on this machine. Unless you're printing in one pass, of course, then it doesn't function. It will always calibrate your machine so your media advance is always perfect. Another feature of it, it has a closed loop calibration system. So when you use the closed loop calibration system, when you load your materials, you'll do your color calibration. When you print on this, the same image six months' time, you can get exactly the same type of colors functioning out of it. Really, really nice feature with that. As you can see, we are cutting at this point in time. Cut is busy cutting, and it's busy printing. Seamless exercise. So coming back to the table here, just want to go through some bits and pieces. So a lot of customers at this point in time are printing for COVID-19. They are printing various things from floor decals for social distancing. Very, very simple, easy to, to do. Um, your markers for hazard markers, all different types of signage. There's poster printing happening at this point in time also. Um, we also have a range of products from a company called DryTech, which allows us to perform an application which is bubble free, very simple to apply. It goes on very, very simply and easily. So when you've got it applied to your material, it's really simple. I know it's a bit skew, but uh, that doesn't matter for the purposes of what we're doing here. You've got no bubbles on the back of it. So fantastic, very, very easy to utilize. This comes in matte and gloss. It comes with the floor option as well. And you've also got the option of a uh, clear that goes with that. Labels for bottles, as I said hand sanitizers, those types of things. A lot of customers have been printing them. Um, so we have customers uh, that we've been working with over this time um, that have been able to change things within their business frame. And um, I'll come back and discuss those with you sh shortly. I'm going to move from the Latex 335 to the S500, which is this machine here. So as you can see, this is a die sub machine. It's 1.6 1, meters wide. This can print up to 62 square meters an hour at two pass, which is what it's printing it at the moment. And it's unique in the fact that it's able to print onto paper, like it's doing now, or it can print direct to textile. Uh, great flex of flexibility that, that one has with that. Um, it's also got all the features that you've got built into your 335 when it comes to automation, calibration, changing of print heads, those types of things. It's fully automated. There's no ink waste bottle on any of these machines. Latex doesn't have an ink waste bottle. The stitch doesn't have the same thing. 
So you don't have to worry about wastage. It's water-based inks also. You don't want to be throwing your ink down the drain like you do with other types of uh, equipment that's, that's out there. Um, when it comes to stitch, it's been used for several industries. The apparel industry is, is one of the, the, the big things that it's been used for. So for sporting, for fashion. You can also use it for soft signage, for banners, flags, those types of things. Um, all of these here were printed at our office, uh, sublimated from paper. If you want uh, your images for fashion and sport, you'll always print to paper. You won't print direct. One of our customers, the Media Shack, um, was in a dilemma at the beginning of uh, COVID-19 with a lockdown. What were they going to do? How were they going to survive? They revolution changed their business. They are printing thousands of face masks um, on their dice subprinter done in three, three layer masks and whatever you, they'll be on the panel later so you can have a chat with them and ask them some questions of how they turn their business around utilizing their stitch printer. So I'm going to take you across to another machine that we have, which is the Zunt. Um, and the Zunt is a digital cutter, which is a fantastic piece of equipment. It's very, very versatile. You can do a lot of things with it. And um, so just to show you what we've been doing, cutting shields uh, for sneeze guards. This is done with Bandit Science. We've done a lot of work with them. We've helped them through this time. Uh, they don't have a router on their machine. They can cut, but they can't route. So they've been cutting their own face shields out. That's what they've been able to do. You can cut textile with this, which is nice and easy to do. You can cut it in multiple layers. So we have a customer that's been cutting multiple layers for masks, and they've been very, very successful with that. Um, we're going to show you some cutting today on a uh, Zanita board, which is the board that has been utilized for the uh, bed um, that uh, Inter Intermarket has supplied us to use for the, for the day. And Noel's going to demonstrate how we do a V-cut on this uh, uh, board. Very, very simple to actually utilize. Um, this is a fantastic machine because it's, it's modular. So it's a machine that is uh, 1.8 meters wide by 2.5 meters. That's a standard bed size. And it is uh, uh, the most commonly sized uh, unit that we have. So it'll busy checking the board. It'll monitor. It's busy cutting at this point in time. It'll do a V, a v cut so we can fold these boards up. It'll do multiple boards when it cuts. Um, and this being a modular machine means that you can add modules to it once you bought it. it comes in various sizes from a 1. Uh, 8, 800, 800 by 1.3 right the way through to a 3.3 by 3.3 bed. Um, this what, the specific machine is fitted with a conveyor system, so it will allow productivity. Uh, which will allow the flow of uh, work. You can put uh, extension tables at the back and the front of the machine as well. Um, so if you wanted to have a board handling system, can be fitted to this. You can fit robotics to it. It does multiple things. So this is a simple cutout that's been done on the, uh, on the, on the Zunt doing, using the V-Route tool. Uh, this allows us to fold the board. And thanks, Snell. Thank you very much. This allows us to fold the board to make it into various shapes um, that you can use. It also comes with features like a router. Um, so this specific machine that we have here has a one kilowatt router, which has got the automatic bit changer on it, which we will sh show you a little bit later. So when we are utilizing the router, which is located over here, this uh, will allow us to uh, route. You can V-route, you can polish, you can do all those types of things with it. Uh, we have two modules on this, uh, so it allows us to run something like a universal cutting tool, which is what we used to cut these shields. Um, you can use a, uh, a dynamic uh, rotary tool, which is what we have here. Being modular, this all plugs in, and this allows us to cut text textiles. So, for instance, we cut the shields. This is the underlay and overlay. Uh, we have a customer, Jacobries, who's been cutting a lot of uh, masks and they've done very well with it, and they're cutting up to six layers at one time. So productivity out of this is absolutely fantastic. Um, 
as I was saying, modular is the answer to it. So you can start off with a basic machine and you can add to it as your business changes or as your requirements change. Um, so yeah, very, very simple and easy to util utilize. Um, I'm just gonna come back to the table and show you a few other things. So for instance, we came up with a concept and I wanna talk about concepts because this is not just about creating a mask. Anybody can create a mask. You need to come up with a concept that people can utilize. So for instance, everybody wears a cap. You can combine a, a shield with a cap. So we've got markets like going back to school. We've got markets like the hospitality industry that haven't been touched yet because they're only uh, going to go back at level two. But we need to be aware of these markets and see how we can adapt for them. So something very simple can be turned into something quite usable when it comes to schools, let's say, for a face shield with a, with a peak, peak cap. Uh, hospitality industry, as I said, that's untouched at this point in time, and we need to focus on what we can do and how we can get into those markets. And this is an ideal opportunity, especially for those that have just come back to uh, work. Um, so just to recap, we've got Stitch, which is over here. The Stitch for your apparel, dye sublimation, simple, very easy to use. The 335 print and cut allows us to be printing, cutting at the same time, which is fantastic, great for, for work workflow. Um, and of course the Zunt, which will allow us to move into different markets. I just wanna talk about three customers that we have that have embraced the COVID-19 and they have been able to change their businesses. We have Bandit Signs, who started out right at the very beginning, doing floor decals, signage, things like that. And then they went into manufacturing of masks, sneeze shields and whatever you, they have revolutionized their business. They are a, a wrapping company that has changed their whole workflow to meet with COVID-19. Green Sky, another customer of ours, done exactly the same type of thing, making incub uh, the um, uh, breathing tents and all the bits and pieces for the medical industry. They've done extremely well with that. And we look at the likes of Media Shack, done the same thing with their face, face masks that they have. So I'm going to um, hand back to Sean Greer uh, in Cape Town to go through some of the features of the Zunt um, so that he can uh, give you an overview, show you the different tools, and uh, I'll be back with you a bit later. Thank you. Thanks, Sean. I see a few questions coming through in the chat window. Uh, just a reminder to everybody that we'll address them in the Q&A section at the end. Can I move? Um, so huh? Midcomp is the only distributor I lost the screen. in South Africa. We have a few resellers, but at the end of the day, we are the guys that are responsible for sales, service, support, and importation of the equipment. So just to give you an overview of the Zoom configurations, or some of them at least, uh, for the different applications, so this is a Zunt S3 L1600. Um, it's uh, cutting pre-printed shirts. Uh, there's an overhead cutter camera to do the registration. There's a screen to tell us what's coming off because you, you can imagine you're cutting collars of shirts and sleeves and you need to keep all the stuff together. And then we've got a cradle feeder at the back, which always makes sure that the fabric is perfectly aligned and not creased. In the middle here, we've got a 100 watt laser uh, cutting polyester fabric uh, mounted on a Zunt G33 XL. So that's uh, 2,500, which is a 3.2 meter wide by 2.5 meter deep machine. Over here, we've got a Zunt D3. So this is quite an exciting machine. It's got two beams. So one beam over there, one beam over there, uh, one set of tools over here, one set of tools over there. And this is cutting leather. Uh, so we've got an overhead cutter camera that registers the leather hide and make sure that there are no flaws in it. And then we've got a projector over here for interactive nesting. Um, and then over here, we've got a Zunt S3 M800, which is a 1.3 meter by 1.8, uh, I mean, 1.3 1 by 830, sorry, my bad, uh, cutter with a robotic arm for picking and placing. This is all about automation um, and remember, you don't have to buy any automation up front. This is something that you can grow into at a later stage. Um, and then this is just a close up of the pick and place robot placing the uh, foam board down. Then 
just minimize myself quickly. So here you've got the Zunt D3, again a dual beam machine uh, with a BHS 150 uh, board handling system on it. So delivering full sheets of corrugated board. The machine, the crane at the back picks it up, places it on the table, registers it, and then the front stacker over here basically stacks all the cut sheets um, done already. Then Zunt's come in a wide variety of sizes. So we've got the Zunt S3 M800, so 1330 by 830 uh, dimension machine, all the way up to the Zunt G3 3XL 3200, which is 3.2 by 3.2. Uh, it's important to note that machines, you can either have them as static tables or with uh, conveyor belts, and you can even add extension tables to handle some really big media. So this is just a close-up of the uh, beam. So here you can see there's two modules, universal modules loaded, and then there are two tools loaded. So this is a driven rotary tool for fabric, and then there's an electric oscillating tool for cutting something like Zenita. Then we've got the ICC camera, which would register black, the six millimeter black dots. Um, and then you have also it can also read QR codes. And then there's a space here for a separate module. It could be a router module, a kiss cut module, or something to that effect. So on this slide here, it's just showcasing the wide variety of tools that we have for the vast array of applications. So Zunt Cut Center basically has a library of medias or substrates in it, and always make sure that you use the right tool with the right blade for the right job. Um, over here, we've got the laser module, the 100 watt laser, uh, over here, we've got a routing module, which is either a one, uh, one kilowatt or a 3.7 kilowatt router. We've got the KISCAT module, uh, which is quite cool. And then over here, you can see the universal module. Uh, it's not loaded at the moment, but all these tools, and let me just minimize myself again, all these tools fit into this universal module. So we've got various creasing wheels, we've got a scoring tool. We've got a pneumatic oscillating tool, we've got electric oscillating tool, even got driven rotary tools for fabric, power rotary tools for Kevlar vests, kiss cutting tools, and even an inkjet tool uh, if you want to print something on your job. There's a collection of registration systems here. So we've got the projector for interactive nesting, we've got the screens that you can see what you've nested and how it's working. We've got the ICC camera, which I've mentioned already, which is the dots. And then we've got the overhead cutter camera, which basically speeds up the registration process infinitely. So over here, you can see the overhead cutter camera. And it picks up these three random pages on the table, but it picks up all the dots. Four seconds later, it starts uh, cutting the job. And this saves a lot of time. Uh, you know, normally operators will spend some time trying to line up the thing on the table so that it's easy for the cutter to find it. Here, you're just throwing these sheets randomly on the table. And this uh, shot, you can actually see we've thrown four sheets randomly on the table. The cutter picks up all the registration dots and then instantly goes and uh, cuts them. So the last thing that I want to show you guys is we're cutting uh, acrylic here. Uh, plexiglass. Um, so this is a 10 mil acrylic and we're cutting it in two passes. This job actually has a 3 mil bit, a 4 mil bit, a 6 mil bit and a polishing bit um, used at the same time. So we have an automatic router changer. What you can see it doing now is cleaning the bit and now it's putting the uh, 6 millimeter bit back and it's picking up the polishing bit and uh, now it's going to take the polishing bit across initialize the bit so it's making sure that it's the right height in relation to the bed um, and then it is going to polish so this is actually quite a cool gift that we uh, created here it's a pen holder and uh, with a little slot for a magnet and a place for your business cards and uh, that polishing bit basically is just giving it its glass-like finish. So we're going to cut across to that shot now, and you can see the finished product. 
There we go. So it's a glass-like finish. So I'm going to hand you back to Sean Davis to go through all the segments, and uh, we'll catch up with you guys a little bit later. Thanks. Over to you, Sean. the company i'm just gonna do a, an overview and uh, finish off so the zunt is aimed at multiple markets you've got so many markets that you can aim at the graphics market that most of us are uh, involved with signage point of sale labeling banners decals it's really endless zunt can be used for multiple things uh, a uh, part of the industry that we're in is packaging as well the pack packaging segment is enormous. Corrugated board, corrugated carton, cutting of plastic sheets, et cetera, et cetera. Um, we've got textile markets for apparel, like we had with the uh, um, uh, work that we've been doing with the uh, uh, dye sublimation printers. Uh, apparel, banner, flags, masks, you name it. There's lots and lots of things within the textile market. There's a technical market also that deals with uh, things like tents, parachutes, sails, bulletproof vests, um, airbags, you name it. It's quite a diverse market. Um, there's some unique markets also that we're involved with um, and some exciting markets when it comes to the aviation sector, um, aerospace, boating, helicopter blades, things like this, gaskets. They're all uh, utilized using the technical side of what the Zunt can, can actually offer. Um, we also have the composite segment, which is uh, quite an exciting segment, uh, cutting things like carbon fiber for sports. So for instance, the Red Bull Formula One team utilizes Zunts for cutting their uh, parts for their uh, body panels and things like that. We're also very fortunate here in South Africa that we have a customer that does uh, motor, motorbike rims made from carbon fiber. They export all over the world and they're using a Zunt to cut that. The table was specifically ordered uh, for cutting uh, um, composites, uh, namely carbon fiber, uh, so that it uh, can ma minimize on the amount of dust and that with the uh, um, setup that they ordered. We also have a huge sector, which is for leather goods. Um, and leather goods is really shows what the power of the Zunt can actually do. So if you take, uh, if you can picture this, you take a hide of leather. I'm going to walk over here to the machine. You take a hide of leather that is thrown onto the table. Now, every hide of leather has a different shape. There's blemishes in different areas, so everyone is unique. Um, you put it on the table. You've got a camera system that comes from above. The camera system will take the picture of it, map it, and then through the um, MindCut software that you can purchase when you're using the leather module will allow you to nest your work on there to get the maximum out of a hide of leather. Um, this is fantastic. It's created a lot of opportunities in the automotive sector. Um, you've got people like uh, Bentley, um, who at this point in time runs six dual beam Zunt configurations like this. So what it means is that this is a beam. So you've got a beam at uh, both sides of it, and it cuts both sides of that with the ex ex extension tables on it. And they run their cutter solely for making seats, body panels, steering wheels, dashboards, whatever the case may be, in leather for their, their, uh, um, their, their cars, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. It's quite am amazing, and it has revolutionized their business. That saving on, on, a, on a height of leather is quite enormous because of the nesting feature that it comes, comes with. So the first choice when it comes to digital cutting technology has to be Zunt. There's nothing else that's in the market that can match the uh, capabilities of this piece of equipment. Um, so just to give you an overview, just to recap on, on things, um, we've been talking about face masks here, sneeze shields, uh, we've been talking about posters, we've been talking about hospital beds, all of those types of things. These are all able to be cut in some way or form on a Zunt table. Posters, you've got rolls of posters, you want to slit them, you want to chop them up, perfect way of doing it is, is on a uh, Zunt. So that concludes my uh, demo, and I hope that you found uh, this informative. And uh, I'd like to say to you that stay tuned, we will have further 
live demos going forward. But uh, I'm going to be handing back to Dylan, and uh, thank you for watching. Great. Um, thank you, Sean. That was really informative. At this point, I'd like to introduce the panelists. Um, they're not all on stage at the same time, as we have quite mm -hmm. a, um, a variety of people, and they don't, we can't get them all on the stage at the same time. So as and when their questions will be asked, they'll be popping onto stage. So first of all, I'd like to welcome Rob Nankinson, the CEO of Midcom Group of Companies, who will chair the conversation today, and he's streaming live from Johannesburg. We have Robin Sprung from Robin Sprung Wallpapers. Robin has a late HP Latex 1500 3.2 white printer on Midcom's PPU program, and he, has, and he was behind the manufacturing of this touch sanitizer station that we covered in the COVID-19 application showcase. He's in Woodstock, Cape Town. Yugesh Moonsami, Production Director of MediaShack. The MediaShack has an HP Stitch S500 dye sublimation printer and are also on Midcom's PPU program. The MediaShack manufactured the face masks we, all were, we also covered in the COVID-19 application showcase. They are coming to you from Midrand, Johannesburg. We have Lars Ben Dixon, Segment Manager for Zunt, streaming live all the way from Altstadten, Switzerland. We have Terry Ragunath, Worldwide Business Development Manager, streaming live from Spain. We have Rakesh Rosen, Director of Midcom Consumables, streaming live from Midcom, Johannesburg. Um, as you've already been introduced to, is to Sean Greer, Director of Zoom Product Specialist in Midcomp. He is based in Somerset West in Cape Town. And lastly, to the very first speaker was Sean Davis, Midcomp Innovation Hub Manager, HP Specialist. So over to Rob. We're just going to wait till Rob can pop onto the stage and to ask us some questions. Let's give Rob a moment. Hi, good morning, everybody. Oh, I'm on stage. Good. Diamond, thank you. First of all, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you perfectly, Rob. Thanks, Diamond, uh, very much for the for the introductions. Um, I want to um, run the question and answer session now with the panel. Um, there's a couple of questions that have come up already, which we'll get to. But before you go off the stage um, and we get to the questions, I'd like, I'd like to ask you a question that I think is particularly pertinent at this, uh, at this moment in our, in our history. You're in touch with all of the players in the industry, the main players and some of the smaller players, both end users and suppliers alike. Um, what do you pick up as being the general sentiment about the future for, for our industry, particularly signage, point of sale and general print advertising? What sort of feedback are you getting from the industry? Rob, just having a look at, um, we be mostly in touch is with, with generally mostly with the supplier side. We do have a lot of feedback with our readers and interaction there. But if I just have a quick look at your poll that's currently running um, on this webinar, um, the question that you guys have posted, do you have a positive outlook for your business post-COVID-19? Currently, it's sitting at a 76% rating of yes. We also posted today. A similar question when we did the interview that you were part of with the CEOs right in the beginning of lockdown. And again, that there was a strong sentiment of positivity that we're going to get out of this. So I think that is strong out there amongst the readers, amongst the manufacturers. But I know as lockdown hit, this, there was a strong sentiment of unsurety. Nobody knew really how long it will take to get out of this and when everyone's back at work. But over the last few weeks, chatting to suppliers, they've constantly increased their sales which is a good indication. So, and also I think with this week, with a kickoff of level three and full manufacturing returns, I think we're gonna see a bigger trend of, of an increase in turnovers, projects will be resumed, um, but who will see? We'll have to see, there's no real glass ball to see exactly when and when it's gonna be at full recovery. One thing I think we should just also have a look at is South Africa still a very, has a very small percentage of online shopping at this stage of time in, in relation to the rest of the world, Europe, the Americas, etc. So at this point, signage, point of sale, print advertising will still be hugely prevalent. However, in this online space that is growing, there will it'll have a big impact long term with me, opening many doors of personalization and branding of goods, which will be another trend going forward. The other opportunities um, that is a trend 
witnessing input from from various other the, the, the role players in our industry is personal branding of spaces like offices homes is another big trend that is going to be um, relevant soon I hope that answers your question there, Rob. Yes, it does. Thanks, thanks, Alan. I appreciate Good. it. And uh, again, thanks for introducing the panel. I'd like to extend my thanks, particularly to Rigesh and Robin, um, as viewers who've taken their time to to join us today and field any any questions. And also, of course, to Lars and Terry for um, as suppliers to join us and add value to this uh, to this first presentation of ours. So, thanks to all of you. Yukesh, I see your background picture there, and I know I've been to your offices, but it is a print on your wall, uh, rather than you being sitting on the beach. Um, appreciate it. So I'd like to go to the, to the questions, um, if that's okay, and, and, and I'll direct the questions to members of the panel, if you don't mind, um, if you get a question that's directed at you, if you can just go on stage to, to answer. The first question that came up from Johan, uh, was a little bit um, off off the wall. He was asking about the fixed rates or the pay per use model uh, as it applies to design jets, which is not really in the graphics space for us. It's technical. Um, so the pay per use program from Midcomp was developed primarily for for low end um, advertising on the latex printers on all the new generation latex printers. However, we do have a subsidiary company, Midcomp Zero, who already offer contractual selling for design jet series, including the T3500 model, which Johan refers to. Um, so Johan, I'll get your details, or if you can uh, post your details, and we will get them to contact you. They do offer contractual sales where they include maintenance and all of the supplies into a fixed uh, monthly rate for, for the technical design jets. So to get on to the um, questions, uh, the rest of the questions, um, Gavin has asked uh, a couple. I think the first one for, for Terence, he's answered already, but perhaps Terry, if you don't mind repeating um, the answer, the question is, how does latex ink technology compare with traditional solvent and UV from an environmentally friendly and carbon neutral footprint aspect? Um, Terry, would you uh, like to say a few words about that? Just waiting for Terry to come back online. Um, okay, let's take the next question for Lars. Lars, if you could um, enter the stage. And in fact, Terry, if you could enter the... Oh, there's Terry now, sorry. Okay. Yep. Um, did you get the question, Terry? I, I got the question, yeah. I'm not, I'm not familiar with the software. I'm sorry, it took me a few minutes. Um, <laughs> so, well, Latex, Latex Inks basically, as, as some of you may or may not know, are water-based. Um, which is a great, great advantage uh, from from an environmentally um, uh, clean perspective. First of all, they're odorless. Second of all, they're they're uh, they're very low on emissions, if not to say safe, to be used in 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 a wide variety of as uh, aspects like interior use, uh, wallpapers, etc. We're quite proud of the certifications that we've got. Uh, Eco logo, for example. Um, uh, and, and, and others which I have documentation for. If any of you like me to send them to you, I can, I can make them come your way. Great, thanks, Terry. Um, yep. The next question, um, Gavin, again, was asking on the, uh, on the Zunt, and perhaps Lars, if you could enter the stage. Um, and the question was, how does the Zunt handle um, the cutting of various types of fabrics and what fabrics can, can be cut on the, on the Zunt lot? Uh, yes, good morning, everyone. I believe I'm on now. <clears throat> yes. And thank you for the question. Um, there's really no fabric that I have come across yet that uh, cannot be cut on the Zund. So I would say with the right combination of tooling and, and knife blades, practically any fabrics can be cut, even felt and carpet and, let's say, more technical uh, textiles and fabrics can be cut with no problem at all. And then the next question, Lars, if you can stay on stage, is also for you. What can be achieved with the laser addition to the zone? So the laser tool specifically, what are the sort of applications that you would utilize that for? Yes, certainly. So the, the laser was uh, mainly developed for cutting uh, polyester fabrics in the situations where you need to seal the edges 
So applications where you want to avoid hemming or zooming the fabrics, the laser will uh, in one process both cut the fabric and also then seal the edges to prevent them from fraying. This is the main application for, for uh, the laser. Okay, there's an application question from, uh, from Neil. Um, perhaps you can comment, but this is something I think that uh, we can contact Neil separately about is when cutting wood uh, for cutting dyes, what tool needs to be used for this, Lars? Do you want to answer that or are you happy that I answer it? Yeah, if you have a, an answer, go ahead with it. Uh, I would say this is something we would need to, to test. It's, uh, it's always difficult with these, uh, let's say, natural uh, materials like wood. Um, wood has very different uh, uh, fiber structure and hardnesses and that combined with uh, whatever accuracy requirements you have to the cut may result in different cutting parameters or, or even different cutting tools. So I would rather not give a, an absolute uh, answer to this right here, but we are very happy to, to test some of your, your wood and uh, just send it across and we'll find you a recommendation for it. So what would you okay. have answered, Rob? <laughs> Exactly that. I mean, for, for mold making also, there's a lot of milling tools that will fit in this and draft. It's not all about cutting acrylic. Lots of possibilities, software. definitely. You can fit round nose, round nose bits into the into the tool and use it for, for mold applications if you've got the right software as well. So, uh, Neil, we will respond in more detail uh, specifically to your to your question. Um, another question for, for Terry, um, interesting one, um, uh, particularly with COVID. Does HP believe that the new world will the new world will look more closely at the environmental impact of printing technologies and be more aware of how populations can be negatively impacted by viruses, bacteria, and exposure to hazardous materials? And do you think this will benefit HP in the long term? Long question. Yeah, um, I think I got most of the question. I, I think I think all of us, not just HP, we've become become acutely aware no, of of all of these changes taking place. I think the the biggest thing that we're all trying to focus on right now is to try to find out uh, or try to predict, which is as you as you know, for anybody here online, very very difficult to do. But one thing one thing we can predict is that uh, the awareness and and the, and the sensitivity to uh, applications in general. That are going to ensure uh, and safeguard the, the, the safety of, of of our customers in general. Whether you be, whether you're a, a retailer, a restaurant owner, a, a print house, or whatever, all of us are busy right now looking uh, for for opportunities like this to 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 bring to to market. Uh, so we're talking about coatings, we're talking about materials, we're talking about prepared materials, pre-coated materials, for example. All of these kind of um, uh, applications are right now on the table in just about any meeting we're in right now. So yes, we're very aware of it. And whether HP would be uh, benefiting from this, I think um, more than saying HP will benefit from from it. I think the whole the whole ecosystem. Uh, HP is just the printer or the oven, as I al always joke in the middle. But you have ingredients, you have cooks, you have a number of other people involved as well. Uh, who are directly impacted by, by by this as well. So I think all of us will benefit, if you like, from this. But uh, the, the ultimate goal is to actually ensure safety to to the to the users. Basically, that's that's ultimately what uh, what what we're all in this for. Thanks, thanks, Terry. Uh, Robin, if you can um, come on the stage, there's a, a couple of questions for for you. Um, and while you put yourself on stage, the first one is. Uh, has COVID-19 negatively impacted your business or do you now see more opportunities? How do you view the interior decorating market going forward? Um, obviously, the, um, it has affected our, our business quite drastically. What we've, what we've unfortunately had to do is we've had to sort of um, slimline our business. We had to look at all of our costs, what we're spending our money on and um, where we could save. We had to also get rid of um, some staff and put them on sort of like let them work from home rather than than having them come in every day we can we can pay them for an hourly an hourly rate that's that that they come in for um, we, we you know we've had to look for opportunities where we um, can sort of still promote our artists and our designers 
Uh, we've come up with a, a hand sanitizer, touch-free hand sanitizer, where, where, where for, for more sort of classy customer for reception areas where they can actually utilize some of our artwork. Um, and then for schools, we've we've done quite a few for these optometrists. Um, so we've also done we've also done quite a few face masks. The the the, the face masks, um, a lot of them also we're using the designs of our of our artists to promote them. So that's been a very big thing for us. So it's forced us to to really look for for different ways of sort of reinventing ourselves, working in a different uh, way, realizing that we don't have to have all the designers and everybody coming in every day, and we could we could rather just sort of um, brief them over email, and they can work from home. And then they only really have to work for the hours that they need to work. They don't have to come in, you know, for the full time. Um, I think also with this sort of like super massive growth of Zoom calls, um, people people want better backgrounds. So there's an opportunity for us to um, create, you know, better backgrounds, um, have sort of like stretched, stretched sort of um, banners that they can just sort of slip on that gives them a, a really nice looking background. Um, that's pretty much that's that's what we've had to do and we have really had to most of all we've had to really look at cu cutting our costs the other thing that we've also looked at is, is is renting out our equipment so like our flatbed cutter which we aren't utilizing uh, full on right now we've you know we've rented it out for 850 rand an hour so we really just had to really look at different ways of, of restructuring our business looking at new ways to work and then just really reducing the amount of staff that we need to come in every day Great. Thanks, Robin. I think, as you can see, both myself and Lars would benefit from your background. My wall is your canvas. Uh, yeah, we'll I can see you. And, and me as well. <laughs> you, guys, you guys need a lot of um, nice backgrounds. I can, I can certainly <laughs> help you with that. Okay, thank you very much. Um, next question is for you, Um uh, it, it was mentioned that you're a Midcom pay-per-use customer. We we're just interested to know how that um, uh, helps you cost for your jobs, and, and do you believe that makes you more competitive? Um, yeah, it definitely helped us in terms of uh, cash flow um, and maintenance on the printer. So um, we don't have to pay for inks every month, um, and then all we have to do is pay for our media and um, I think there's certain exclusions, but yeah, it definitely helped us with our cash flow. Okay, great. And just um, um, another question for you while you're on stage is your initial reaction to the to the lockdown. You know, when when the whole country was put into um, stage five and told to stay at home, um, what was the reaction within the business, and and how quickly did that turn around to to the success that you've made during this during this period? So um, we were yeah we were paralyzed when we heard um, what was happening and uh, like everyone else, um, like costs were were still there and you know Darren and I did lots of um, calls to figure out ways to to come up with a new idea to try and sustain our business. Um, so we're working on our e-commerce for customized um, clothing. And so we thought that would be a great idea to do customized face masks. And we created the e-commerce website. And we had launched just before the president had stated that everyone needed to have a face mask. And so that really launched our business. Good. That's an opportunity well, well taken. Um, another question for Lars. Um, a general question about how COVID-19 has impacted on your business worldwide. Has that been a, a plus point for, for Zunt with all of the applications that we've highlighted? I'm, I'm sure um, your, your waiting list must be getting longer. <laughs> no, it's, it's uh, really amazing to see how quickly many of our customers have adapted to this uh, situation and, and developed all kinds of new applications. Uh, like the ones you have shown uh, earlier in this uh, webinar and we have uh, we have also posted uh, quite a few other stories on our website if you go to www.zoom.com you will see under the hashtag uh, we are in this together many examples of how uh, customers are utilizing Zoom to to uh, to make new products uh, COVID-19 related but uh, still, 
the majority of our customers, uh, they normally produce signage, which are used in uh, all kinds of events, sports events, exhibitions. Uh, many are producing signage used in uh, in the whole retail uh, business. And even, even now shops are beginning to reopen. Uh, all events are closed. There's nothing happening. And also budgets are, are cut on, on spending for advertisement. So our overall business has uh, certainly been down quite significantly since March. And we see in April and May also now a slight recovery. So it's definitely going the right way again. But uh, business-wise, we have not gained for this from this situation at all. Okay, thanks. Thank you, that was the uh, question from Sarel. Um, I'm not sure what um, technology and ink technology specifically that is uh, being referred to. The question is, and I think Terry, you can help with this. Uh, with the scratch resistant inks, do we see some issues with laminates releasing from the inks? Have you looked into this and made any adjustments? What suggestions can you uh, do you have? And can this be due to curing of ink? So I think if that's a question specifically for latex. Maybe a few words on the, the changes in, in latex from, from version 1 up to now, of course, version 4 with the R2000, particularly as it pertains to adhesion and uh, scratch resistance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, th I think um, the, the, um, the, the general answer would, would have to be, uh, as there's so many moving targets, uh, moving, moving bits and pieces here with uh, this curing, like was quite rightly said in the question, there's the materials, uh, there's the print settings. There's the, the 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 amount of ink you lay down on the on the surface, etc. So many variables. We'd have to check basically what what those are, what kind of media we're talking about. So yes, um, I won't say off the bat that that every every material will work 100% from 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 the word go. It's just a case of uh, calibrating it properly. So I guess the question, the, the an my answer would be, let's look into this particular. Um, um, case uh, more in detail offline if you like and we can we can find what the, what the what the issue may may be with adhesion okay thanks Terry um, you coming back to you um, a question about um, your choice of sub printer um, you're using the uh, stitch s500 what what made you choose the HP stitch and and what do you believe for you are the standout features of that printer um, we did a lot of research um, into which die sub printer we wanted to go with. Um, and we chose the stitch uh, predominantly because of the excellent service that we get from Metcom uh, before sales and after sales. And uh, color is definitely not an issue when we're printing on the stitch. I mean, if you can look at my background, we printed this. Uh, wallpaper on the stitch um, and the vibrancy and um, the ink levels uh, that uses that it uses on the paper is like minimal um, so we're getting such great value for money at the moment um, we run like thousands of masks and I think we yet to we just about to change ink cartridges and that's from I mean, I can't even, I think we ran about 20,000 to 30,000 masks so far. So we're getting really good value from it. Good, thank you. Robin, a similar question for you that was asked of um, Yogeshini just now is um, um, how, how having fixed costs in, in terms of the paper you structure, how does that help you with your costings and, and your competitiveness? I think the, the, the main thing for us is that, um, like Yadeshi said earlier, is that you know, it, it, it helps us with our cash flow. Um, we, we're able to know exactly what our costs are going to be for the job. So we, we don't have this sort of situation of having to calculate the heads in, having to calculate everything else in, because that's all incorporated into that cost, um, especially the, 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 the ink. Um, so when it comes to costings, we know exactly how much ink we're going to use on each of the on each of the different substrates. We know exactly how much it costs per square meter, and then when when our customers call in, we can just we can just give them uh, you know a price per per square meter. It's, it, it it really has helped, and it has been a wonderful system. Especially the fact that we don't have to we don't have to own all of the sort of consumables that we can have we can have um, we can have 
stock of all of the, the, the colors in our, in our cupboard. We can have a full set of heads. We can have all, all the different type of consumables, cleaners, and everything available for us when we need it, and it's all costed into that package. It really has been a wonderful system for us. Thank you, Robin. I see that Rakesh has uh, come on stage. Rakesh is Director of Midcom Consumables. So if there were any questions for, for consumables and specifically around the COVID-related applications, please post those questions now. Rakesh is available to answer them. And uh, there's no none specific as of yet, Rakesh. Do you want to say a few words about the materials that we might not have necessarily sold a lot of in the past that all of a sudden became flavor of the month during these uh, during these times can you comment on that sure can you hear me rob yes fine? okay fantastic um it's it's been a very interesting time especially for midcom consumables and trying time as well for lots of customers around us um, we have been very successful in developing new products especially uh, fabrics that have been manufactured for, uh, in South Africa for um, fabrics, uh, masks, uh, three filter masks. We've been selling a lot of plexiglass as well, um, which we can't get enough of our hands on for the sneeze guards. So interesting times. Um, your traditional vinyls, not so much, but a lot of the dry tech spot on uh, vinyls for your um, social distancing and also posters going up into walls that are quick fixes with air release bubble free removability with no uh adhesive so yeah interesting times <laughs> i don't see any uh, further questions um i encourage anybody again if you've got some last questions to ask uh Lars, the last one perhaps for you is um, um a question that the market is very saturated with various uh, machine manufacturers and um, particularly the, the Chinese invasion, how, how do you set yourself apart in the market from, uh, from your competitors? I think um, productivity, quality, reliability, and upgradability are some of the key words here. Um, you have to remember the lifespan of a Zund machine that typically exceeds 10, even 15 years. And what you get is really a piece of equipment that you can rely on to perform at uh, very tight tolerances for a very long time. And you did a very good job earlier of showing all of the different options. And um, all of these options on the Zund is, of course, also upgradable. So if you're having a piece of equipment over this long time in your business, I'm sure your business will also develop and your cutting requirements may change over that amount of time. And with the Zund, it's very, very easy to to upgrade and, and basically address new applications. COVID-19 is a perfect example of this. And the previous questions about how it's affected our business, certainly the upgrade business has increased a lot um, for customers who, who needed uh, new tools or different tools to, to deal with these new uh, uh, applications. So I... Um, I think the, especially the Chinese manufacturers you mentioned before, they are certainly, let's say, less expensive uh, machines to buy. But if you consider the long term, um, let's say, uh, total cost of operation, um, there is no better uh, uh, or no cheaper machine than a Zund, actually. Thanks, Lord. Um Again, no more questions at this point. Uh, Perhaps I'll hand back to Dylan. I'd first like to, uh, and maybe Dylan can give us some results from the polls. I'm not sure whether that is uh, live. But, and we're a few minutes over our, our, our ending time. Again, I'd like to thank uh, Yugeshni and, and Robin as, as customers. Thank you very much for, for taking your time and sharing your, your experiences. And for Lars and, and Terry from uh, our primary suppliers and, and friends, uh, from Zunton and HP, thank you very much for, for spending your time with us uh, today. If there's any other questions Thanks that come out, uh, the sessions will be sure to email both through to you separately. So, Diane, if you'd like to wrap up and, uh, and close off, that would be great. And thanks for your participation today as well. Great. Thank you, Rob. Um, just having a look at the polls, um, do you have a digital cutting table? Um, there's 20% yes, 80% no. I think the most important one would be, though, is, is, is do you have a positive outlook for your business post-COVID-19? And that, again, is a 70% yes. And I think that's very important for the industry. 
it's a good sentiment out there. In closing, I would like to, just before we go, just everyone that has not done the poll, just to do the poll quickly. Then on behalf of Sound Africa Live, I'd like to thank you, Rob, and the MidCom team for such a professional setup and presentation. Thanks to Terry, Lars, Yugeshni, and Robin for your time and insightful input. And lastly, just thanks to Johannes' team from Orange Productions for their camera setup and streaming of the demo center. This will be available on replayonsignafrica.com and we'll send us some notifications too. Guys, have a great day further and thanks everyone. Thank you. Thanks, Donna. Thanks, everyone. Ciao.